everybody, this is me, Dr. Rachel Bromnick, and uh, today we're talking jobs, looking at following your passion with Amber Scotting. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> so welcome, Amber. Hi. Thank you, thank thank you for me. coming along. <laughs> Amber's one of our undergraduate students, and we're calling Amber's passion cognitive neuroscience which some people might find a little bit surprising maybe or niche but it's great <laughs> that you have that that passion so let's sort of talk about some of your interests and some of the things that you've been uh, doing and part of the aim of this sort of set of episodes is to inspire others to follow their own passion um so um, let's just start. So what made you, first of all, interested in cognitive neuroscience? Well, I took psychology at A-level and really enjoyed it. But what actually got me into cognitive neuroscience itself was uh, Oliver Sacks' book, uh, The Man Who Mistook His Wife for a Hat, oh. which is just sort of a collection of case studies and um, with uh, people with sort of like disorders and I just found it so interesting. So it is really fascinating. Really he fascinating. writes really well as well, yeah, doesn't he? for people that aren't necessarily experts yeah but we anyway, might have some a level students listening yeah they definitely. could follow that as well so uh you did a level psychology and then obviously because you're here you decided to make this your undergraduate degree choice yeah uh yeah i just enjoyed it so much at a level and just wanted to see where i could go with it right so. so what have you what sort of things have you been involved with since you've been at lincoln uh well should we talk about the Dementia Project? Yes. Because <laughs> <laughs> um, this is meant to be following students' passion, but it is a passion that we both share. So yeah. both Amber and I have trained with the Alzheimer's Society to be Dementia Friend champions, and we've been both running sessions, haven't we? Some together, some separately. Yeah. Trying to kind of spread the word about dementia awareness. Yeah. Um, it was actually Rachel that ran the session that I first So you're one of my friends, friends with, yeah. yeah. Uh, so yeah, and I spoke to her after the session and said, is there any way I can get involved? And yeah, Right, so you went on to do the training. Yes. So just tell people a little bit about that training. Um, so basically, all it is is um, you go to one of these training sessions for the day and they run you through what it, a, a dementia friend session themselves and then tell you how you should deliver the session. Right, so it's a 45 minute... 15 minute session. Oh, uh, yeah, the day yeah, yeah. sessions. Um, and, and then yeah. the trade is one day, isn't it? The training's it? a full day, yeah. I mean, the reason I like being a dementia friend champion is because, you know, it's so important to spread the word about dementia and also help dispel some of the myths and stigma that, that people have. But yeah. in terms of balancing it with my lifestyle, it's really flexible sort of volunteering, Definitely. isn't it? Because you can choose when you want to do sessions and yeah. who, you, who you do it with yeah definitely do you think it's built your confidence up with public speaking and things uh yeah definitely <laughs> <laughs> uh, one of the first sessions that we did was to about 60 people yeah it was a really was, big one uh, we went from doing about five to 60 yeah. and it, yeah definitely but if someone's up. interested i mean i did my first one with like my sister and her husband yeah i did my so first you, with my mum yeah so. <laughs> so you can start practicing yeah um, so people can look on the Dementia Friends website to find out about that. Yeah. And maybe they want to come to one of our sessions. We'll be running them all through the academic year, won't they? So they can come along, participate, become one yeah, of our friends. Definitely. And you can request a session and see any that are running. Yeah, on the web the on the Dementia well. Friends website. Yeah. You've also been involved with a student group, haven't you? Uh, yeah. So, so that's more about sort of raising awareness around the uni uh, to all different types of like all aspects of dementia. So that's a student union group, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, um, so we've sort of joined the Alzheimer's Society uh, that's running on campus and we're just doing fundraisers, uh, raising awareness and we've had quite a few talks with lecturers and people that are quite prominent right. in the field, so yeah. It's, it's a really good group, isn't it? Yeah, They're doing definitely. some really good things. Yeah. And things like fundraising or bake sales yeah. might suit some people that want to be involved but don't want to do the public speaking yeah, definitely. side There's of things. Any, you can do all sorts of things. Different roles and, yeah. and things. Yeah, definitely. That's great. Um, so back to sort of cog neuro more broadly. Um, you've also sort of developed like a research interest in this area. So... Do you want to tell us about some of the opportunities you've taken advantage of? Um, yes, yeah, so over the summer I'll be 
uh, part of the Euros program. Okay, that's great. Um, well done. So, with that, it's sort of it's like research. a summer internship. Yeah. Uh, so conducting research and that'll be done through summer scientists, which is where sort of young kids from around Lincoln sort of come to the uni and take part in sort of okay. science sort of projects. But uh, that's sort of looking into children and their language in a neurological sense. Ah. But um, as what well, sort of things you be doing? Well, you're running experiments and. Yeah, um, so we'll be conducting our research during that week. Right. So it's just sort of looking at if a person's handedness is linked to their um, language ability. Ah. Ooh. So, uh, yeah. Is it like, is it like left-handers are problematic or? Um, there's, or, a, it's not. Excuse me, I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm just <laughs> like hypothesizing. Um, it's not a two-way link, but oh. it's uh, people with language problems are more likely to be left-handed. Oh, okay. Not left-handers. Yeah, yeah. Bad, uh, but uh, yeah. So. All right, well, good luck with that. And Thank you. Um, so, you're just finishing your second year. Yeah. And then you're going to go into your third year and you're going to do your dissertation. And have you managed to, like, gear your or plan your third year around your interest? Yes. Um, <laughs> so, a bit of a cough. Um, my dissertation, I'm hoping, will be on um, sort of ageism ah, okay. uh, and looking at biological motion. So, people with point light displays. If you're given a description of someone, uh, possibly with like dementia or depression and stuff like that, whether they'd rate when given the question, to what extent do you think this person's happy? Oh, how okay. that would change depending on the description that you're given about oh, the person. Okay. But all you're seeing is sort of little dots right, moving around. Right. Okay. But uh, it's been shown to have some really big oh, sort of okay. results from that. So, yeah, just seeing if oh. ageism is sort of. Relevant to that. Yeah. Oh, well, good luck with that. And have you taken advantage of some of the Cogneuro electives that we offer? Yes, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> uh, most of mine that I've chosen, and I'm hoping that I get, are uh, Cogneuro. So, yeah, um, I've chosen two sleep um, and dreaming modules. Because we've got a sleep lab here at Lincoln, yeah. haven't we? Yeah, yeah. Um, and molecule to mind so sort ah, of like the more biological side yeah and um sort of cognitive neuroscience right okay yeah, good. So. Well, good luck with that Thank and let's you. just look a little bit further into the future where do you think you'll sort of take this interest next because we've got your history of like before a level and reading the book and studying the degree and following your passion so yeah. do you think you'll take it to the next step what, um, whatever that might be <laughs> I'm hoping to sort of stay with the neuropsychology. Okay. Um, whether that be clinical or experimental, okay. so working in a hospital or within yeah. sort of a research facility. There's um, different sort of ways of taking yeah, that interest there's a lot forward. Of ways to go there's sort of it. some people take it in a sort of more practical way, and they might go into something like yeah. occupational therapy, where you're helping someone with directly helping someone with like say stroke yeah. rehabilitation or the research side or yeah um, as you say the clinical side as well yeah i'm still really interested in it at the minute uh, yeah. at all all aspects and i'm hoping that some of the modules that i've got next year will help me sort of narrow yeah my interest down and like find out what i'm wanting to do but all of it is so interesting to me <laughs> <laughs> all right well it's uh, it's a really great passion uh, passion to have because you know with so many unanswered questions aren't there that can really yeah. directly help people with stroke or dementia or or even parkinson's and things like that so uh thank you for coming in today so part of you know asking people about their passions we want to inspire people to find their own passions i think the series is called follow your passion but actually with this one we want people to follow our passion because <laughs> <laughs> we want people to become dementia friends it's yeah. not just a uni thing it's Definitely. a national campaign so please listen out for when you are uh, running sessions across campus or, or beyond and um you know get out there take advantage of opportunities amber's a brilliant example of someone who's taken full opportunity of what lincoln uni can sort of offer um you've done some other things as well just to sum up you know, because I hear you went abroad for a year. Was it a year or just um, a placement? It was for five weeks, so just over a month. Um, I went on a placement abroad in Sri Lanka. Brilliant. Um, which was sort of like running um, creative therapeutic sessions. Right. So whether that be um, in sort of like institutions or um, sort of like orphanages and stuff okay. like that. Okay, brilliant. Um, but yeah. So there's so many different things people can get involved definitely, with. Definitely, definitely, yeah. Well, good luck, everybody. Uh, get in touch if you want to hear some more ideas to 
follow your passion and take your career forward into the direction of your choice. I've been talking to Ava Scotland. Thanks, Amber. Thank you. <laughs> Goodbye, everyone. Bye. Bye.